you're too kind. Good afternoon, everybody. As she said, my name is Evan Beard, and I run Deloitte's U.S. Art and Finance Group. We are an interdisciplinary body. We provide tax services to collectors. Uh, we provide consulting services to art-related businesses, the auction houses. We're Sotheby's auditor. And we also provide uh, business intelligence services. So when someone's selling the $20 million Picasso, we are usually hired by the art secured lender or the auction house to do a background check, an anti-money laundering check, and in sometimes an intelligence check on the credit worthy worthiness of the buyer. So I come from that perspective, and I'm going to give a, a talk to you today on the financial structure of the art market from that perspective. I don't have a connoisseurship or art history background, but rather we have our hands in every nook and cranny of the art market from a business and finance perspective. And so what I want to do is take you through four very short vignettes to help illuminate the structure, the current structure of the financial uh, market in regards to art. And so I'm going to take you back um, to what I believe is the most important event that happened in art history in regards to the current structure of the art market. Uh, we don't have to dwell too much on uh, the Academy in Paris. Um, art historians usually uh, talk about the Academy as the great villain in art history um, because of the rigid academicism and uh, the fact that it stifled innovative um, uh, art styles, etc. Um, but in 1863, uh, the, the Academy rejected two-thirds of the work that was um, put up to them. Uh, work from Manet, like uh, Garden on the Grass, and also uh, Jean Kind and uh, Matisse. And so during that time, uh, Emperor Napoleon, who was no fan of modern art or uh, sort of these early artists like Courbet, etc., decided to have... A, uh, a, a salon of the refusals.